Hello, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity of listening to me today. I look forward to taking maybe the next 10 minutes or so to look at our team's project work around teaching and training during the COVID pandemic in Swansea Bay University Health Board. In terms of content, I'm going to talk briefly about three key projects on how they impacted on patient care and how they've influenced training going forward in the future. So in terms of training requirements, we had to look at training an extra 2,000 staff coming back to the profession from maybe retirement or moving from their job role. The training was COVID focused in terms of what would be required on the ward. And we just built a brand new 28 bed intensive therapy or intensive care unit, which doubled the size of the existing provision. We had dedicated red, amber and green zones where staff could or could not move between them. And we had to look at new ways of working within the coronavirus pandemic. The five P's as we call it was a major change as practice had no doubt changed over the years for these staff coming back to the NHS. There'd been major impacts and changes in policy and lots of procedures had changed, as well as the products that staff handle on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, the documentation may have changed significantly since those people were last employed. The first step that we did within the organisation was to set up a dedicated medical devices training room where we had workstations in the corner of each of the laboratory, a dedicated resources centre and small numbers of staff coming in, rotating around each workshop. And we held that for about two weeks and went through about 100 staff that were trained on infusion pumps and feed pumps and end of life care devices such as syringe drivers as well. We couldn't sustain that because the numbers were meant to be massive and, and very pleased to say that the, the local football team, Swansea City, asked us to come down to the stadium where we then held all our training courses off site in, in gigantic rooms that could seat uh, and service at least 100 people at a time, all socially distanced. We had breakout rooms where we could set up a medical device training centre, including the, the key themes of intravenous therapy. We had COVID cleaning stations and a registration desk that was clearly segregated clear signs, access and entrance to the building. And of course, as you can see from the picture, plenty of car parking spaces for those attending as well. Good evening. The boss of the NHS in Wales has said there are encouraging signs that the demand on the health service here is stabilising, with the numbers of coronavirus patients in Welsh hospitals and intensive care units decreasing. But he warned the NHS might have to deal with a second or third peak if current lockdown restrictions are lifted too soon. Our health correspondent Owen Clark has the details. For now, they're forgetting the textbooks because these first-year medical students are joining the ranks of the NHS. This fast-track training at Swansea's Liberty Stadium means they can become healthcare assistants. I kind of feel, in a way, I signed up for this. I wanted to do medicine and I always wanted to be able to help people and this is an opportunity that I feel quite privileged to be able to go into a hospital and help where I can even if it is just holding someone's hand and having a chat and making sure that they feel comfortable. In the next few days, retired nurses will also come here and across Wales, more than 2,000 former health and social care workers have chosen to go back to work. We fast track the, uh, the high risk training courses that they have to do. We've pulled those all together. We've used all our educators and facilitators, pulled them from all across the health board into a coordinated training plan and put together what we consider is a very, very useful programme. I think we're going to be taking forward anyway. But those working on the wards are still under pressure. For example, a survey of anaesthetists working across the UK published today showed many are concerned about a lack of protective equipment, with four in ten reporting being mentally distressed. Of course, in the emergency preparation, we've mainly focused on getting COVID ready. I mean, in that process, we basically put all our resources towards COVID, and we now need to work out how we're going to get back to the point where we deal with the COVID stream, which will be as with us for some time. And how do we also pick up cancer surgery, for example, or other urgent surgery? Because when those patients are also still in need, and then, then they should not be forgotten. Yet 47% of our hospital beds remain empty and no patient has yet been transferred to the network of field hospitals being established across Wales. 
I think we need to uh, look at the field hospitals in different ways. Firstly, um, we may still need to be utilising fully the capacity that we've made available because there could be other occurrences uh, around the way this virus develops. Meanwhile, efforts like these to strengthen the NHS continue, and with good cause. Not only could the virus re-establish itself in communities when restrictions are eased, but the NHS will also eventually have to deal with a surge and a backlog of patients with other conditions. The Welsh Health Service will need all hands on deck for quite a while yet. So let's look in detail at the three major projects that our team was involved in. The first one was the Back to the Floor training programme that was basically focused on essential skills for staff, everything from washing patients, feeding patients, to managing basic medicines, managing infusion devices. And this course was delivered off-site, as you can see, in the Liberty Stadium, right at the beginning of COVID, um, before we actually had the segregated PPE and, and social distancing measures. Also added to that course was a course around the intravenous hub, where in Morrison Hospital, the main site, we built a brand new intensive care unit which hosted an internal hub where intravenous medications were being prepared. Now, this is something that is way outside what is normally expected within a hospital because nursing staff and registered practitioners would prepare the medicines they required themselves, mix them themselves, dilute them into syringes and infusion bags and administer medication they themselves had prepared. But in this instance, because they lived or worked in the red zones, they weren't allowed to come out of those areas. So we had a designated pre-prepared area where drugs were being made up by about 100 staff that we trained. And they were pharmacists and staff that couldn't work in ITU because of fit mask issues, where the medication was prepared on their behalf. And that is something that we had to address properly with our policy changes. And it was a major change in practice. This is something that we wouldn't normally do in, in safe IV therapy. And we had dedicated storage and fridges where we kept all these products ready-made. So they were handed through into the red zones, having been prepared in the green zones in that IV hub. So our team was heavily involved in developing that. The third course that spun out of this training program was all around medical gas and the safe use of oxygen not only taking into account the information coming out of central government about the restricted flows of the vacuum insulated evaporators, the VIEs that control or store all the large liquid oxygen, and the fact that we had limited flows coming out of the walls and sockets and we basically didn't have enough gas. We also had to deal with the issues around APG, which is aerosol particle generated, and that's what COVID is, and the safe use of devices. And we then led on to a news project or the National Early Warning Score, where the department developed training courses bespokely focused on a news program for recording the flows and the device used for patients receiving oxygen therapy. So that spun out into the launch on the 1st of March 2021, News Cymru uh, on St. David's Day where staff were issued with posters and laminated cards to identify the codes to use on the news chart. You can see the blue oxygen device codes there. And staff carrying out the observations were then document on this new news chart under the oxygen therapy section, which is a, a section that we developed in the department. They had to list the, the device that was being used, whether it's an N for a nasal cannula or a SM for a simple mask right through to venturis and reservoir masks and the precise flow that was being selected so we could look at efficiency savings in terms of flows and how that limited the prescriptions. And below then the oxygen saturation, that was the prescribed saturation target level. And we rolled that out and the audit that we did post implementation of this showed a massive increase in compliance to the monitoring forms and completion of the documentation. So in total during the COVID pandemic uh, and focused on the essential skills training, the back to the floor training targeted to certain types of staff. Our small team, and there's only three of us, we delivered over a thousand face-to-face -face training sessions, including hands-on practical. We developed and implemented and launched the News Cymru, uh, the National Early Warning Score with the new auction therapy sections. We rolled out the back to the floor course, which has now been adopted, and we continue to deliver that on an ongoing basis. And the Ivy Hub training programme, which is no longer in place, but it's there sitting ready to help and support any COVID pressures going forward. And we've also developed these courses into a new interactive e-learning module, uh, which is now delivered on all induction trainings, become part of mandatory training. 
and this is focused on the safe use of medical gases and the safe use of oxygen devices and we're about to launch that as both an interactive e-learning course for Swansea Bay and roll it out as a national free course for the rest of the NHS as well. It would be wrong to say that I did this on my own. I could not have been able to do this without our small team uh, of Jenny and Claire. Now, Jenny's retired since. I've told her the good news that we, we won the IPEM gold medal. It's not an actual gold medal. It's a, it's a certificate, I believe. But on behalf of uh, my team uh, and all the educators at Swansea Bay, uh, thanks for the, for the support going forward. A thanks to IEPEM for, for the award and the recognition. And thank you very much indeed for, for all your listening as well. And I'll, I think it's open up to any questions.